it's um, it's just something different and it pushes music in a new direction I feel in that um, classical music is the audience for which is dwindling um, unfortunately it shouldn't be and I'm hoping that by being able to entice people with the music that I'm doing in the modern vein um, perhaps they'd like, to, they'd like to hear the original version and and pick up some uh, Monteverdi or or, uh, or John Dowland lute songs um, because it's it's great music and it should last forever. When we first started this idea of putting together these different styles um, we I had been doing different gigs as a jazz singer, singing these early music songs in a jazz way. But I was at home rehearsing um, a very famous song called Amarilli Mia Bella, and we had uh, John Goodsall visiting us, who was a guitar player of rock and progressive jazz. And <laughs> this really cool arpeggio line and I started singing Amarilli over it but I changed I kept the text and I kept the original melody but I changed the singing style and the rhythm and we made up this new arrangement and And it just worked so well that we started arranging different songs and we basically took songs from the 17th century primarily, Henry Purcell, Claudio Monteverdi, John Dowland, and we gave them new arrangements, keeping the original melody and text intact. Then they go. <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't make any sense yeah. at all, you know? And so we, I mean, basically I can do, I have more agility so I can do that, but then when we get to the three or the one, or three, two, it, we, have to go we do have to change the tempo slot because this is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, Percy, Percy we, <laughs> Percy we have to do a little damage control on, uh, on, on your volume.
And it's my pig nose. Like, I lost that thing like you me. He said, don't play too loud. On one chord. Song. Do you want to hear that or do you want to hear that? I can just record. You just want to record? Yeah. I just want to record. I'm, I'm doing, I'm trying to do this with the notes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. You might have to hear that. It's also my mother record. It's my mother record. <laughs> I'm the producer. I'm the artist. I'm the band. I'm the whole mother caboodle. <laughs> Including my trousers. I mean, unless you want. <laughs> I know. Aren't you glad I think of these things? What are you guys gonna do? Like freeze your bodies, and then when you defreeze, you could change your spirits? No, these are the kind of questions that just keep you going. And then I'm saying that I might like to come back as one of my cats. And Ron was saying that he thought I'd already been there, done that. <laughs> Yeah, that's very observant. And that perhaps I had, the reason I didn't like to eat live mice was because I had evolved beyond that. <laughs> well, just like we have three. Uh, John, can I have a banana? Oh, thank you. Awesome. <laughs> and they're perfectly ripe. Thank you, Frank. They look good. Thank you. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> hey, John. Where's my dunce cat? <laughs> Tell me. John, I have to get it on film. So tell me the story about when you were uh, going to school, which is not public school, right? But well, it was yeah, public school. It would be here, but over there it's, uh, it's like secondary school. Right, right. Not the best, you know, the second so, best. The second best. Yeah, well, no, well, what the thing about the dunce cap's a true thing. It's, yeah. like, it's not just like a Monty Python sketch or anything. It's like if you didn't pay attention to the... The, the class, or let's say you were goofing around with your buddies or, 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 mm -hmm. or tattooing yourself, as I used to do under my desk, you know, with a pin. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, anything that wasn't like paying full attention to the teacher, he had the option to just like make you go stand in the corner, you know, facing the, you'd stand in the corner mm -hmm. with your back to the class, with your face in the corner like this. Right. And then you'd have to wear this big cone shaped paper hat, yeah, with a D on it. Are you serious? Yeah. I can't believe this. This was when, like in the 60s or something? Yeah, well, when I was there, yeah, it was in the 60s. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, That's heinous. 60s, 70s. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and Percy Incredible. did it too. Percy uh, was a fr frequent wearer of, <laughs> of the dunce cap, so he said. <laughs> so, That's obscene. You know, I started to get quite comfortable, uh, actually, with the dunce cap on. I felt more at home. What was going on in the heads of those teachers? Yeah, I don't know, how to say Do you think there's some kind of statute of limitations? Like maybe you could go back and sue their asses now or something? Oh, <laughs> you know, you could claim emotional, you know, distress or something. Well, and... in my case, the statute of limitations probably ran out. But, but, uh, and I couldn't really claim emotional distress because, because of my, uh, my, um, you know, history after that. You know. Oh.
though there's the, you know, the, the ground and everything, but within the ground, it's kind of a, you know, the way my lines are, they're just so florid and, and you know, it's like as the living waters, the wa you know, I mean, the text is all about, you know, it's a, from the Bible, so um, as, as the living waters and, um, I know, I'm not playing a note. I know. Well, that's what happened last time, too. That's but true. then you ended up finding a role for yourself on the yeah, stage. Yeah, a role in this role. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you, know, you just push sound file away. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you know, like this, and then oh. you create that space, and here you go, you put your sound. <laughs> well, that's a good thing to do. Speaking and you know what's really interesting is he does things that continual players would never do. Well, yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. little, little things like playing this C sharp right yeah. along with you. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, no, no, it is fascinating. And he, I think he was a teacher for Scavaldi. Or maybe that just sounds good, so I'm making it up. No. I'm pretty sure he was. For Scavaldi yeah. studied with him. More than that, he really doubles the melody through. Mm hmm. Here. Yeah, that's the thing. When we first. Never double. It, yeah, yeah. But that's actually an Italian addition. Mm -hmm. I got from another singer. Right. Yeah. See? 30 years after we put a man on the moon, we're still doing with Campbell. <laughs> Can't believe this. So tell me. Right, now we'll be on the As opposed to having a slightly more push. Oh, that's got a ring to it. Hey, Johnny. Hey, Johnny. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Leitomini is more like, you know, exult in him, play the, the tabret and the psalm and, and the. And the um, An air traffic controller strike. So there was no commercial flights to France. So we went to Biggin Hill and somebody rented a little um, handy page. He's, he's not lying. Thing, yeah. He's telling the truth. <laughs> kept, a, he kept going up. And he said, well, no, he kept going. <laughs> No, I mean, this was a small, I mean, like, we could see the waves, you know, oh, yeah. the ocean as we were going across the English wow. Channel. I could look out and see the waves. That's pretty low. Which is what made me feel nauseous. Oh, know, I see. Back. Yeah. <laughs> we were in, in my dream, Mark and I were, he was with a band touring, and we were in Holland. But it was very mountainous. So I thought, okay, I'm in Holland and I'm in the mountains. This is not, <laughs> this is definitely a dream. And then we were staying at some really beautiful B&G type place, you know? And and while I was sleeping, in my dream, I, I dreamt that Monteverdi came to me and said, you know, like I was having this conversation with, with, with you know, Claudio. And he said, I think just keep doing what you're doing. It's great. So I, w I thought that was so cool. But anyway, so yeah, and then the big thing is, does the how do I make this music work in the modern arrangement? So that's always has to be a consideration: is that I could actually cross it over and do something with it, because not everything is gonna. Yeah, I mean, you you don't even need to change the. I mean, I I don't change any of the notes. Mm -hmm. All I change is the rhythm, and then the underlines. You know, the the, the accompaniment is and obviously the chords are. Jesus. 
Uh, could you mute, mute me again? I'm going to unplug. How could I merge these two styles, which I love so much, jazz, rock, and early 17th century repertoire, early Baroque repertoire? And what came out of that, the, my two recordings, uh, Nuove Musiche and Remixes, seemed to be just, it just seemed very natural in that we took the original melodies and texts and added modern harmonies and rhythms to create um, songs that you can't quite tell if they that they come from 400 years ago originally but yet I'm singing in different languages I sing in Latin and French German Italian and um, English of course and um, it just makes for an interesting uh, fusion of of sounds and styles <laughs> 